Tis officially the time of year where I get very stressed out picking between my own children. For today's video, I have mustered up the strength to pick out all of my favorite makeup in the year 2021. I picked these products last night. I've slept on it. I woke up this morning, I double checked, I put some of the products on my face just to make sure these were truly the best products that I tried in 2021. It's a long video, so if you need to pause right now, get a drink, get a snack. We're in for some good makeup talk. Let's get into it. I'm wearing some stuff mentioned in today's video, but let's get started with face primers. I tried to keep everything in each category under two initially, and that was not possible. So three was my goal, but I cheated in some areas. So for face primers, this is probably my number one favorite face primer that I tried. It's totally a game changer for me. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. I've pretty much talked about this primer any chance that I got. It is equally as hydrating as it is luminous. So if you have dry skin and you're looking for a really good hydrating primer that's going to leave a glow, I highly recommend this. It feels very silky on the skin and I really do believe also it smooths out the face as well. It really is an all-in-one and I don't get why it's not more popular. It really is one of my new all-time favorite primers. The next primer that I've been loving this year is the Gucci Silk Priming Serum. I actually picked this up for the first few months that I owned this. I wasn't as in love with it and then one day I picked it up and ever since then I haven't been able to put it down. It really leaves the skin feeling extremely smooth and ready for makeup while also having a hydrating component to it just super smoothing to the face. I really love it. It feels really great. It's not quite as hydrating as the Armani and it doesn't leave a glow like the Armani, but it just leaves your base feeling ready for makeup. It feels extremely luxurious. And as you can see by the packaging, it looks luxurious as well. Definitely another one of those underrated primers that I've been loving. And lastly, this year for primers, I really got into the Fourth Ray Face Milks, whatever flavor, I don't care. If you don't know, Fourth Ray is the sister or body care brand of ColourPop and they are very affordable. Lately, I've been using the Oat Face Milk. This just feels like a really lightweight moisturizer before makeup. Like I said, I do have more normal to dry skin right now. It is more in that dry range because it's winter and these have been perfect for pre-makeup prep just to add a little bit of extra hydration. Sometimes I'll use this mix with some primers. Today, I did use my Armani primer to give me that glow and then I used this to give an extra layer of hydration because it really does feel like a lightweight moisturizer that soaks into the skin beautifully and it's affordable so I've been loving these I've been going ham with them let's move on to foundations I would say 2021 for me was an unsuccessful year of foundations of course I managed to find some good stuff but for the most part I was like uh, other than these three that I'm mentioning so first this is probably my all-time favorite foundation that I tried out this year this is the Guerlain Les Central high perfection foundation there is a glowy version to this and then there is this one which is more of a matte finish. I actually prefer this. It's what I'm wearing on the skin. It looks really perfecting. I don't want to say skin like because it's more so perfecting than it is skin like but it is not too heavy of a foundation. It gives the perfect amount of coverage and when I want my skin looking good this is amazing and it also lasts a really long time. So actually in terms of liquid foundations this is my all-time favorite that I tried this year. It's Phenomenal. I believe you can pick it up at Selfridges if you're in the US. Next is more of a tinted moisturizer. So many lightweight foundations came out in 2021, which is why I suppose I couldn't find really any foundations that I liked. But Fenty really knocked it out of the park. This is the Fenty Beauty Each Drop Blurring Skin Tint. This is great for every day and it gives a little bit more coverage than you would expect for a skin tint. I love the finish on it because it's not too glowy, but it also isn't matte. It's kind of like a demi matte leaning a little bit more glowy. It truly is the perfect most skin-like finish. You can't even feel it on this skin. It really does blur the imperfections, I feel like, which is very rare for a foundation to do. And I like more of a medium coverage, just so you can get an idea of what I prefer. And I love this. This is by far my favorite skin tint that launched this year. Finally, we have a powder foundation. I am team powder foundation. I don't think they get the recognition that they deserve. And I was hoping this year powder foundations would become more popular 
popular. We did have a slight surge, but it still hasn't reached the popularity that I wanted it to. But Fenty, once again, they killed it in complexion this year, came out with the Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I have mine in the shade 230, and I just think this is a beautiful powder foundation. It is so soft. It doesn't look too cakey on the skin. You can get a really light layer. You can even use this to set your makeup if you want, or you can get something like a kabuki brush or a sponge and really pack it on for coverage. It wears really beautifully, and it's just so quick and easy to put on, which is why I love powder foundations, and I feel like they look so natural as well, especially when you pair it with the right products and the right base and Fenty just killed it with this formula it's so creamy and beautiful on the skin concealers I have three so the first concealer that I have oof it's a good one but it's really really expensive this is the Tom Ford shade and illuminate concealer this is kind of a newer release it definitely came out in the later half of this year if you have the money I recommend it I think it's a beautiful concealer it's a little bit on the thicker side but it really does smooth out the under eyes and I really do feel like it wears a long time as well it doesn't leave the under eye looking too dehydrated it leaves it always looking quite hydrated honestly and it just blends out beautifully it has the perfect medium to full coverage and it's so versatile I feel like this works great all over the face as well if you wanted to use it like that it's just a solid concealer it has everything that I want now it is $90 so if you aren't looking to spend that much I think a great concealer that's similar that is less popular that is more affordable it's still a high-end product but you know <laughs> when a concealer is $90 this makes it look more affordable this is the ABH magic touch concealer this is another one of my favorite concealers that launched this year it's a little bit more hydrating I would say the Tom Ford is a little bit better it holds up a little bit better but I actually much prefer this more for everyday wear because it's a little bit more easy to spread on the under eyes I love it it's a great medium to full coverage concealer as well you can apply a lot of it and it doesn't get too creasy or cakey underneath the eyes again another formula that I think you'd feel comfortable putting this over your red spots if you aren't feeling foundation that day beautiful consistency definitely recommend this and then the last one that I have to recommend is from Fenty Beauty this is the bright fix eye brightener one of my all-time favorite everyday concealer so this is more on the lighter side of coverage it's not going to cover your under eyes too much but it is perfect for no makeup makeup days I reach for this constantly it doesn't need to be set with powder and one of the things that I think is so amazing and that I just can't seem to understand is when I blend it out with my fingers just a little bit underneath my eyes perfect for mask makeup by the way my under eyes don't crease with this this product does not sink into the creases or the fine lines underneath your eyes if you have a light layer of this on it just lightly brightens the area and keeps everything looking really blurred and smooth it's perfection I don't understand it it's amazing no makeup makeup this is going to be your best friend during bridal season this year you know you w I wake up super early and I'm wearing a mask the whole time so I really don't wear makeup so I would just put a little bit of this concealer right in this under eye area and I was just amazed at how it made my under eyes look it's really beautiful all right now let's move on to face powders I have three that really blew me away this year so this first one is from Nabla and I might have put this in last year's but it still deserves another recognition if I did <laughs> so this is the the Nabla Smoothing Pressed Powder, definitely an underrated powder in my opinion. If you like the Charlotte Tilbury, I think this is another great alternative. It's a little bit more powdery than the Charlotte Tilbury, but it is equally as smoothing. I have it underneath this side of my face. You can see this side of my face looks completely poreless. It's because of this powder. It's incredible. Another powder that I used on this side of my face is the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. Now that I'm giving it a direct comparison to the Nabla, I will say that the Nabla is a bit better, but this feels so lightweight on the skin and I do believe this still does smooth the skin as well. It's very lightweight and easy to set your makeup with if you don't want to look too powdery. So these two have been my go-to powders this year for setting my makeup. The last powder that I want to talk about is my no makeup 
powder, okay? This is a no powder powder. A lot of people love this. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder because when you put it on the face, it literally does not look like you have on any powder. It sets your makeup without getting rid of the luminosity underneath. So if you struggle to hold the glow in your makeup after you set your makeup, this is perfect. It's great if you have dry skin because it's quite hydrating. It still is really great if you have oily skin as well because it's such a lightweight layer that you don't feel like you're layering and layering product on top of product on your skin type. It really is the perfect finishing powder. Anything for natural makeup, especially in the summer, I think you would really like this. By the way, guys, I'm moving as fast as I can because we have so many to talk about. Let's move on to cream bronzers and contour. So this first one is a very affordable option. I absolutely love it and I love the versatility of it. This is the e.l.f. Cream Contour Palette. It really is spectacular. I love all of the shades that you get and the quality is great. So you have a really nice lighter cream contour that leans a little bit more on the cooler side. This is a neutral brown that's a bit deeper. I don't use this shade too often but you have this and then you also have this light cream shade here as well to highlight or correct or fix any areas that you need. I'm really blown away that e.l.f. has been able to create a cream formula like this that doesn't break up the makeup underneath and blends so easily. I think a lot of times people feel like when it comes to cream contours that they need to spend a little bit more money. If you get this, you don't need to. It's very affordable and especially if you are just getting into contour, it will allow you to play with different colors. This has been a fabulous little sidekick. I can't believe how inexpensive it is. Definitely recommend this one. Now on the contrary, I do have a very, very nice very luxe cream contour to share with you, but it's just, it's so lovely. This is from Westman Atelier, and it is the Face Trace Contour Stick in the shade Biscuit. I just think that this is the perfect contour shade for myself. You can see it's quite gray, but it's not too gray. I use it on this side of my face. It blends out very beautifully, and I cannot get over how perfect this tone is for my preferences. It can be great as just a contour, or if you want to leave it without putting a bronzer on top, it looks great as well. I love the tone of this. I love how luxurious the packaging feels. It's quite heavy and it blends out beautifully. Definitely a cream product I recommend you looking into if you're looking towards the luxury brands. And then finally, I do have a mid-tone contour. Again, I think this brand knocked the color out of the park. This is by Makeup by Mario. I did not expect this to end up being one of my favorite products of the year but it truly has been so used by me. So this is called the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in the shade Light Medium. Comparing this to the Westman Atelier, this is a little bit more brown. It's not quite as gray. So you're gonna be able to get a little bit more out of this in terms of bronzing and contouring. I do find this product a little bit more difficult to blend if you were just to go in with a sponge afterwards, but this brush does wonders. I didn't love this product when I was trying to blend it out myself with my own products and tools, but when I apply this and then I use this side of the sponge to really push it in, this is the perfect color and it leaves actually I feel like a little bit of coverage because it is a thicker product and if you just pat it in instead of swiping it's going to add coverage to that area as well. Perfect shade range. If you feel like you haven't found a cream contour stick yet that's the perfect shade. Makeup by Mario I feel like really curated a line with perfect shades that are going to work with a lot of different skin tones so definitely check it out. Let's move on to powder bronzers that I've been loving. I discovered a lot of fabulous ones this year. Let's start off off with the Ilia. This is the most recent find of amazing bronzers that I have found. This is the Nightlight Bronzing Powder in the shade Drawn In. It is beautiful and buttery. Those are the only two words that I can use to describe this, but the way that it blends in with your makeup just looks so natural, similar to that of a cream bronzer. One of my favorite aspects about a cream bronzer is how seamless they look with the makeup. Somehow, this powder is so creamy that this does the same. It's so easy to apply, so easy to blend out, and it has a beautiful golden tone that I don't find with a lot of bronzers that is very flattering on me. So I've been loving this. This isn't I don't want to say underrated because I know people have talked about this bronzer, but it really is the business. It is 
so good. I have a more affordable option as well that I was blown away by. This is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. It leaves a very subtle luminosity, nothing glittery or anything, but just like a healthy skin-like luminous glow. I have mine in the shade Sunswept M1. I love that it is a baked formulation, so it doesn't leave any sort of mess. It looks really natural and healthy on the skin, blends in very easy, and best part is it's quite affordable. Not a lot of people talk about this. I don't know why because it's an incredible bronzer from the drugstore. And finally, this was a very, very beginning of the year find, but it's ended up being one of my most used bronzers. This year, this is by the brand Vesca. Vesca is a Canadian brand and I believe they truly formulate some luxury quality products. This bronzer blends in like butter. They also have an extremely inclusive range for very, very fair skin tones all the way to very, very rich skin tones. I I personally love the shade Kissed by Santorini, but sometimes I'll mix it in with their lighter bronzer because this can be a bit deep on me, but in the summer when I'm more tan, this is my perfect shade. I like it because it does have a little bit of depth to it, but this doesn't run too warm. It's that perfect neutral bronzer, but it still leans more on the warm side. It's not going to contour the skin, but it's great for giving a really sun-kissed look. Let's move into blushes. I feel like blushes took over in 2021. There were an endless amount of blushes to choose from. One of my favorite cream blushes that I tested out this year were the Tower 28 blushes. I just found myself constantly reaching for them because they are such a easy versatile formulation. They even came out with some new colors this year. My most popular shades that I use are going to be Magic Hour. This is just a beautiful neutral kind of pinky shade. I have this as my cream base and I actually had powder over my face already from the bronzer, from my setting powders. This went right on top of those powders with ease. I love how easy they are to use. And then I also have been using a lot of Rush Hour which is a little bit more of a coral shade, something a little bit brighter. I think these are perfection in the summer with a tinted moisturizer or for really lightweight makeup like the Fenty Skin Tint. This just blends in with the skin beautifully and I do find in the winter I actually prefer to use cream products because I don't feel like I'm gonna sweat them off. So I've been using these a lot recently. They're kind of my go-to cream blush formula. Now also kind of a cream blush formula, I have to give it to a face palette that includes cream blushes. You guys know this is going to be in here. This is the Patrick Ta Major Headlines Blush Palette. In Incredible. Now, I don't think this is for everybody because the shades are quite vibrant, which is a good thing because it's going to work for a great amount of skin tones, huge range here. But if you are quite fair and you're heavy handed, I don't think that this is the palette for you because even I myself find I have to be really, really light with it. But on the top here, you'll see there are some cream blushes and then on the bottom there are powder blushes. This is a phenomenal formula. Patrick Ta absolutely killed it. The cream blushes were great over powders if that's how you choose to use them. Comparing it to the Tower 28, the Tower 28 is definitely more creamy, whereas these have almost like a soft powder dry down to them. They still are true cream and give you a little bit of glow, but they're just a little bit more dry than the Tower 28, but they are absolutely beautiful. I actually love the cream blushes on their own, and the powder blushes as well are just absolutely stunning, and when you mix the two together, they're just great. This is a phenomenal formula. I don't know that this color story is going to be for all of you because they're quite vibrant, but he also does have a couple other more neutral shades in his permanent range where you can buy them individually that I almost put into this video, but then I decided I didn't because I've been loving them for, I think, before 2021. Just know this formulation in general, his duos with the cream blush and powder blush, phenomenal. Definitely worth a try. Since we're on palettes, let's go to the other blush palette that I've been loving this year. This unfortunately is no longer available but it is by far one of the best blush palettes that NARS has put out in a while. This is the NARS Orgasm on the Beach palette. It is absolutely stunning and one of NARS's most beautiful formulas in my opinion. You can see they are quite shimmery blushes but I use this a ton this summer. The formulation on this gave your skin the most beautiful sheen. I can't describe it and the colors in here absolutely stunning. I'm really, really sad that they no longer sell this because it really is that good, but this is my favorite blush palette that came out this year. 
phenomenal from NARS. And then individual blushes. As you know, Pat McGrath Labs came out with their own blush line this year, and I ended up really, really liking them. At first, I wasn't sure if they were worth the money, but now that I've been using them, I can't get myself to keep my hands off of them. So I must say, they're worth it. And my two favorite shades I wanted to share with you if you didn't already know them. So the first one is called Desert Orchid. I normally do not like warm blushes on myself. I'm more of a bright pink blush kind of girl. This is the most beautiful warm blush. It's, it means a lot when I'm saying I like a warm blush. This is phenomenal. It has a very subtle glow to it. So I would say leaning a little gold, but it's stunning on the cheek. And then right now over top of my cream blush from Tower 28. I'm wearing the shade Divine Rose, which is just your classic rose shade. It's absolutely beautiful. These blushes last such a long time and they really are a luxurious formulation. The color range is phenomenal. I love these blushes. If you can get a, your hands on a blush trio from them, totally worth giving it a try. It's a great formulation for sure. I'd almost describe the formulation as like heavy duty. While these aren't super pigmented, they do have a good amount of pigment, but when you put them down, they're going to last and they do blend. So they're still easy to work with. Totally worth it. And then I also discovered the Laura Mercier blush formulation this year. I'm new to it. I know their blushes have been popular for a while, but this year I have absolutely loved passion fruit. I think this color is beautiful. I was able to pick up a couple other shades during the most recent VIB sale from Sephora because I love these so much. It's just a solid, good, reliable blush formula with really great colors in the range as well. And I think sometimes Laura Mercier can fall under the radar, but they really do have some phenomenal quality products. And these blushes are great. I kind of, not that I need more blush on my face, but it's always so tempting when I'm talking about it. Like, look, they blend on with ease. They're so user-friendly. <laughs> and then lastly, in terms of blush, this is a blush and highlight duo from Wayne Goss, but this is more so about the highlight. <laughs> the blush is really awesome. This is in the shade Coral Rose, and I do love the blush, but you need to get this for the highlight, okay? The highlight in here blends into the skin like butter. It gives the most smoothing, soft effect to the cheek. I always get asked, Morgan, what are the most smoothing highlights? Which, if you go by the philosophy of makeup, a highlight is never going to smooth the skin, but I do believe there are some formulas where they blend into the skin seamlessly and don't draw attention to the fine lines or the texture on your face, and this is one of those formulas. This highlight is quite blinding, but it is so stunning. I don't know what Wayne put in this highlight formulation, but it's buttery, creamy goodness, one of my favorite highlights. Two other highlights, and they both are from Pat McGrath, and before this year, I did not like the highlights from Pat McGrath. I didn't think she'd nail down that formula, but now she totally has. So it started off with the Divine Glow Highlight, which came out with her blush launch. And I think this is an attainable highlight to purchase because sometimes luxury brands can go a little crazy with their highlight prices, but this one is really good. Again, it has that same smoothing concept as the Wayne Goss, as I described. It's a little less creamy than the Wayne Goss, but it still is really great. This has a very soft golden champagne sheen to it. It's more subtle than the Wayne Goss as well. The Wayne Goss is what's giving me all of this glow, but I've been loving this highlight for every day. It blends seamlessly into the skin. It really is a great everyday highlight if you're looking for one. And this one is a little bit more blingy bling, a little bit more out there, a little bit more luxurious, and kind of more expensive. This is from Pat McGrath Labs as well. This is from their holiday collection. So it's limited edition, but I had to mention it because it is just phenomenal. This is the Sublime Skin Highlighter in the shade Lunar Nude. You will see it is in this beautiful golden component. And look at this. I'm really sad because mine is starting to lose the embossment just from use. But this is a stunning highlight, my all-time favorite that she's come out with. It gives you quite a blinding glow. It's not 
not as smoothing as the other two that I just mentioned, but it just sits beautifully on the cheek, and I really love this one. When I want a little bit more of an extra oomph to my cheek, I feel like this one really does it. It's, it's been on sale. It's worth it for the sale price. I don't know if I would recommend spending $60 or full price on this highlight, but if you can get your hands on it, if $60 is something that's within budget, or if you can find it on a good discount, you need to give this one a try. Next up, I have a full face palette that I wanted to talk about. This is from Charlotte Tilbury, and for a while I could not shut up about this on my channel. This is the Instant Look of Love in a Palette in the shade Pretty Blushed Beauty. She did also launch a deeper shade if you do have a deeper skin tone. I used to not like these Instant Look in a Palettes, but once I got one, I was hooked because I truly do feel like you can create full-blown looks on your face with this one. I love these for travels, and I love the color story of this one. So first of all, my favorite part is that it comes with an Airbrush Flawless Powder, so that makes it truly so so much more portable and able to create a full look. All you need now is just your foundation and concealer and then you have something to set with, a bronzer, blush, highlight, and eyeshadow. You can even go as far as using this as eyeliner. I mean, powder product, color product wise, it's all you need. I love that this leans a little bit more neutral with a pop of pink for the cheek. The highlight is very pretty. This is actually one of her permanent range highlights put into this guy. The value, unbelievable. Love this peachy shade with these simple neutral tones. It's just the perfect all-in-one palette for me. I've loved this all this year. It is mm, my favorite instant look in a palette that she's ever came out with. All right, guys, eyes and lips. Let's get going on it. Now, if you want to know eyeshadow palettes, they won't be in this video, but tomorrow I will have a full separate video of the best eyeshadow palettes of 2021, so hang tight for that. But let's get started with eyebrow products. So many eyebrow products, it seems, came out this year, and there really were a lot of great ones, but there were also a lot of not great ones. But let's talk about the ones that I love. So this first one is the one that I'm currently wearing now, and it's my most used brow pencil of 2021, for sure. This is the Kosas Brow Pop. Love the packaging of this. Love the consistency of this. So I really like this because it is a drier brow pencil formulation. So I feel like it really does allow you to get true individual hair strokes on your eyes and blend it out without your eyebrows looking too creamy. Or sometimes I find when a brow pencil is too creamy and you try and blend it with a spoolie, it ends up kind of blending away the definition. I love that this keeps its definition almost like a powder when you blend it. It's absolutely amazing and a great color really leaves my brows looking phenomenal and then setting it with the Kosas Airbrow is the perfect way to finish off your everyday brow. I love that the spoolie on this is nice and tiny so it really allows you to individually direct where you want the directions of your eyebrow hair to go and it has a nice medium hold on it. It's nothing too crazy but it really is great for every day and it does help hold your eyebrows in place. So these two have been the combo. Also this is an older pencil, but I can't get over it that it's $3 because of how good it is. This is the e.l.f. Cosmetics Instant Lift Brow Pencil. I've been loving this for a quicker fill for every day. It does have a bigger tip, which normally I don't like. I like definition and the little tiny hair strokes, but just for every day to throw something onto my eyebrows, I've just been loving this to kind of quickly get a fill in. I do not have any issue buying it again because it's only $3. It's so cheap. It stays all day. It's just a great everyday brow pencil when I need something quick and dirty. And now what you guys might not know about me is I'm actually a huge eyebrow powder fan. I actually do prefer brow powders over my pencils and sometimes I'll just use eyeshadows to fill in my brows. But what came in this year and saved the day was the e.l.f. Bite Size Brow Palette. Now this is only $3 and I don't like half of the palette. I don't like the cream wax products that they have in here. Those don't work in my opinion. But the powders are really beautiful. They're great undertones. They do have a great range and especially if you have a more unique hair color or you're very specific about the undertone, check out their line. They do offer quite a few different shades. I just have the neutral brown. I like that these aren't too warm. I like that there's a lighter shade and a darker shade which really allows you to customize your brow. I usually like to keep the lighter powder in the inner half of my eyebrow and then go darker around the arches to really define that area. So I've been reaching for this a 
lot this year. Again, it's pretty dirt cheap, so I recommend these if you're looking for a good eyebrow powder or want to give them a try and maybe you struggle with finding the correct shades and eyeshadows. I think that this is a great way to go just to guarantee that you're going to get good undertones. And finally, this brow product was something that I would never have thought I would have gotten into, but this is from Patrick Ta, and this is the Major Brow Lamination Gel. I didn't even bother picking this up when it first launched because it just wasn't a product that I was into. I promise you, I'm really not into the crazy laminated feather brow, and if you are, that's great. It looks great on some people. I feel like I look scary with it, but you have noticed I have been playing more with fluffy brows this year, and it's thanks to this product. I just keep my eyebrows pretty trimmed so it doesn't get too out of hand but glue for your eyebrows okay I love this spoolie on this it's very different it's more so of an applicator as opposed to a spoolie it's like a hairbrush for your eyebrows so it's going to individually place each of your eyebrow hairs which I think makes your eyebrows look more full and it's literally glue wherever you set your eyebrows to go they're going to stay I secured the outer part of my brow with this product today and you can see and go in nowhere each hair is going the exact direction that I place them to go so that's phenomenal it's harder to get a hold of because they do sell out of it but it's awesome I believe they've been sold out of it for a while all right let's move into eyeliners I have one and only liquid liner that I was into this year I probably if it weren't for this product would have had more eyeliners to talk about because I did try a lot this year but this one blew them all out of the water it's the only one it's my one and only it's the best of the best this is the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen. I don't understand how an eyeliner can be so good. So first of all, I like that you get two tips here. You get a bigger tip and then you get a smaller tip. And from what I've heard from you guys is this is going to last forever. Even though it is more pricey, it doesn't dry out like a lot of eyeliner pens that you might have experienced. I can't say that, but I've had this for three months and it's still really good. It's just so black. It's not too watery of a formula, so it's not going to go up those fine lines when you apply them and there's something about the applicator that I find makes it so easy to create a wing a lot of times it's one and done for me I don't really need to go back and concentrate on creating a wing don't know what is it is about these applicators don't know what it is about this formula but it really is the best of the best and it lasts forever doesn't bleed love it now for pencil liners I fell in love with the Natasha Denona macro tech eye crayon particularly in the shade brown because it really is a deep brown. I've discovered using brown eyeliner over using black this year. I used to be all black every day, no other option, but there really is something special about black eyeliner around the eye. It's a little bit softer, but it's more edgy. I don't know. It's difficult to explain, but anyways, I've been loving how deep brown this is and also how this does not budge. It is a little bit on the harder side of pencils, but it is so rich, you guys, and when you put it on your waterline, it's not going to budge at all. Phenomenal eyebrow pencil. Now, I've been talking about these mascaras a lot lately. In fact, even this month, I posted a top five mascaras, so all three of these are in here, but I really fell in love with these three mascaras this year. So the first one is the Armani Eyes to Kill, which I'm going to say is probably, of these three, the best mascara that I've tried. It's equally as lengthening as it is volumizing. It doesn't get too clumpy. This is what I'm using for my lower lashes and I know they don't look that impressive but I'm telling you the fact that you can even see my lower lashes, that's what's impressive. This is my favorite everyday mascara. It really is beautiful for length and volume. In terms of length, I've loved the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extension Mascara. Interesting enough, at first I didn't like this. It took a while for me to really enjoy this, but I love this for my no makeup makeup days because it's so easy to take off. I hate rubbing my eyes to get mascara off, so this adds a lot of length to my lash when I'm not wearing a lot of makeup, which is perfect. I don't really need the volume if I'm not wearing any eye makeup. As long as I can get some length to my lashes, I'm good to go. This is one of the most lengthening mascaras that I own and it's easy to take off with just water so it's great for no makeup makeup. And then finally, my favorite drugstore mascara which is really voluminizing and beautiful. This is the Maybelline the Full C's Lash Lift. I love this and I really do feel like it does give a slight lifting effect to the lash as well. It's just a repeat buy from the drugstore. It's really, really good. Haven't heard a lot of people talk about it but it also is one of those mascaras that make my lower lashes look great, which is something that I'm always looking for.
Dang, that's it for eyes. Like I said, I will have an eyeshadow video up very soon, but let's move on to lips, and she's hefty. We'll start off with lip liners. I mean, I was definitely sticking to my tried and true this year. To be honest, lips weren't inspiring me this year at all. I was just using all of my tried and trues. I felt pretty unmotivated with the mask situation. I think I'm not the only one that's going to end up saying this, but I love my Pat McGrath, love my Charlotte Tilbury. Those are kind of my top two, but here are some other colors that I've been loving. So I did discover a new Charlotte Tilbury color, which I'm wearing right now. This is Pillow Talk Medium. I've actually used this before. My mom owned it, but this year I ended up buying one for myself because it is perfect. While I do love Pillow Talk, I like this because it's just a bit deeper and typically speaking, I do prefer something deeper on the outer edge of my lips and then going in with something lighter. I do have a smaller lip size, so I think that really does help kind of adding that volume to my lips. And I love this. I think it's a beautiful nude pinky rose with a little bit of depth. And you guys know I stand by the Charlotte Tilbury lip liner formula. I did discover, however, Natasha Denona lip liners this year, and these are fantastic. They're super creamy and comfortable, and as expected, Natasha just has the most perfect nude range. So if you're looking for a really good nude color range of lip liners, look no further. Natasha Denona is great. They're nudes that just make sense. So I have a Natasha, which is a little bit more of a neutral pink, and then Dana right here which is that great contoury kind of color when you really want your lips to look much more full so I recommend Natasha and Dana those are my top two most used colors beautiful lip liner formulation and then lastly I've been really into the Patrick Ta precision lip crayons this year these are not new but gosh you would have thought they were by how often I've been using them I don't love the push to, to get the product up kind of thing, but I love the shape and feel of these because I feel like it makes it so easy to trace and carve the lips. Definitely has a drier, more waxy formulation compared to the two that I just mentioned, but again, love Patrick's color range and I love how maneuverable these are and mm, really, really great if you're interested in looking into these. I highly recommend them. I use them a ton this year. Now lip colors, you will notice all of them kind of look the same, but I have a different reason for using each. <laughs> so I would say the number one most used lipstick by me this year, the one that deserves the most praise is from Natasha Denona. This is the I Need a Nude in the shade Amorosa. This came out with her Valentine's Day collection, and this is the perfect cool toned rose shade. If you're searching for a good lipstick color to wear with purple eyes, this is it. The Natasha formula is extremely creamy and you can see there's definitely a cooler factor to it. Almost more mauve than it is rosy. Anyways, this is my most used lip color because I wear so much purple so often. You can't tell me this isn't the perfect lip. But also from Natasha, when I want something a little bit more peachy neutral, because I do love to pair brown lip liners with a shade like this. This is Andrea. Absolutely love this one as well. This is perfect for more warm, neutral looks. Great, great nude shade. Now, another great mauve color to wear with those purple eyeshadows is going to be from Pat McGrath that came out this year. I prefer the Natasha Formula over Pat McGrath, but love this color. This one leans a little bit more rose compared to Amorosa, which is more mauve. This is Dream Lover, but again, another great rosy lip looks really good with purple and pink looks and Pat McGrath don't get me wrong still has a fabulous formula so I've been using this I love Pat McGrath's line but I feel like Pat McGrath doesn't have enough nude wearable shades this is that nude wearable shade that I really really love Ooh, and oh my goodness I discovered a great new formula that I'm sure a lot of you have discovered as well but I can't choose a color yet because there are a few colors in the range but I've been loving all of them for different reasons but the BK Beauty Luxe Lip Formula is just so stunning. I would say at the moment my most used shade is Acceptance which is a little bit more of a neutral kind of rosy shade. Everything in this range right now is extremely wearable if you like the more rosy kind of nudes. So I would like to see her expand the line a little bit more away from the pinky shades and let's get into some neutrals and some browns. I think a lot of you guys would like that. Maybe some more warm tones. But the formulation on these incredible so luxurious and thick on the lips they literally fill in your lip lines and make your lips look more full and smooth 
love it. Makes any lip look so much more plump because of that formulation. Highly recommend it. And let's finish off with some lip glosses. Okay, two main brands as you can see, Pat McGrath and Fenty. We'll start off with Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath has my all-time favorite lip gloss formula. I would say definitely number one in my opinion. So I wanted to share with you my three most used shades. And I do believe I have talked about these shades before, but I just keep going back to them. So the first one that we have is Divine Rose, which is going to be for my more pinky lips. Then we have Dare to Bear. I like this one because it has a slight golden sheen to it, and it looks great over a nude lip. And then if I have a brown lip, I really love Faux Real. These two kind of go hand in hand. I don't necessarily know that you need both, but I love the golden sheen that the Dare to Pair has. And I like how this is more of just like a solid nudie brown shade. Today, I have on Divine Rose because I thought it would look good with something pinky, but those are the three that frequent my rotation the most. And then Fenty, of course, is my purse lip gloss. I always have a Fenty lip gloss in my purse. So I actually, though, have discovered their heat for formulation and I can't go back to their other formulations. So this one has kind of the same finish as her cream finishes, but I've been loving Fussy Heat and Fenty Glow Heat and I am not normally a lip plumper kind of person. I don't really love that heated feeling, but there's something about these that I love the feeling. Yeah, for me it's not too powerful of a plumping sensation, but I know a lot of you hate that. So if you hate that, the same for you, stay away. But it's a mixture of like my favorite things from Fenty. The cream formulation, they have my favorite colors. And I like that little bit of spice that they have. So been loving those. Those have been my most used lip glosses. But I will say this year I stopped using glosses just because of the mask situation. There's nothing more disgusting to me than wearing a gloss and a mask. So I've really stuck to my tried and trues this year. Wow. All right, you guys. That does it for my 2021 makeup favorites. Do you agree with anything that I said? Did we have any favorites in common? Let me know. I'm out of breath from talking about so many products and thank you so much if you stuck with me through this whole video. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Tomorrow, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed because I will be posting my favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2021, which you know is an even bigger deal because I'm such an eyeshadow freak. But anyways, that's all for today, guys. And I believe Merry Christmas Eve. Hopefully I um, am getting that right. So Merry Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Have a good one.